class together, and uh, we're going to be working on some more chords, and then also learning some bar chords, and then uh, getting into today's songs. All right, and as always, we have our summary and Q&A session at the end. So, y'all ready to get started? Y'all ready to get started? All right, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, yeah, Michelle, I am sorry, <laughs> I miss you, yeah, welcome as a new member, alright, so, um, the first chord we're going to be doing today is what I like to call the hardest chord in the book, alright, now this is a joke, alright, this is a joke, <laughs> because it is the easiest chord in the book, all we need to do is put our second finger on the seventh fret, a second fret, excuse me, on uh, the A string. All right, so hello to everybody. So second finger on the second fret. This is called an E minor seventh chord. Okay, and it is by far the easiest chord that you can play on the guitar. Okay, unless you just strum all the strings without pressing anything, but that's not really a chord. All right, so there we go. That's the E minor 7. I'm kind of going to go through some of these chords a little bit quickly because, you know, I want to spend a little bit more time on the bar chords, but I want to introduce these chords and, um, you know, like they, and, and show you a couple different places where uh, you'll be able to use them. Uh, and also when you're figuring out chords or when you're, uh, you know, downloading uh, the chords for songs uh, from the internet or finding chords for songs on the internet, you might see this seven type of chord a lot. Um, so it's good that you all are well versed in this or versed in it at all. Okay. Uh, the first chord was called an E minor 7 chord. Now we, we are learning the E7 chord. All right, so these chords are very similar in shape to the chords that you have already learned. All right, so they're just kind of a slight variation from what you've already done. So the E7 is similar to the E major chord. All right, we have our second finger on the second fret of the A string. Except we have an open D string now, as you can see in the Talager. We have an open D. Okay. And then we have the first finger on the first fret of the G string. Okay. And this is the E7 chord. Alright. Just want to make sure that everybody can hear me and see the webinar slides and the screen and myself. All right, before I continue, I just want to make sure that everything is uh, peachy keen. Wonderful. Thank you, Hamida. All right, wonderful, wonderful. So, ladies and gentlemen, the next chord is the second finger on the second fret of the D string and the first finger is on the first fret of the B string. And this is what we call the A minor 7. Now, don't worry if you can't see me right now. I put myself off of the, the screen. I'll put myself back on in just a second. All right, so here we have the A minor 7 chord and the A, G, and high E strings. Okay, the A... G and high E strings are, are, um, there, uh, are open, excuse me, <laughs> they are there, and what we're supposed to do with them, we, we keep them open, alright, so, here we have this open A minor 7 chord, alright, so all of these chords, very similar to the major and minor chords that we've already done. And there's slight variations, and the slight variations, they give a little bit of a different tone, different sound, so it gives you more sound to play with, literally and figuratively. Okay, here we have uh, for the A7 chord, now there's a few different ways that we can fret the A7 chord. Right. One way is to put your first finger on the second fret of the D string and your third finger on the second fret of the B string. All right. So that's if you're and the open A, G, and high E strings are the ones that are played. Okay. And then, okay, we have here. Now this is one way to play the A7, and 
And the reason I give you this way is because, right, if we are playing our A major chord, right, with this first fingerings uh, that I showed you last, uh, uh, in lesson five, okay, last week, right, then all we need to do is pick up that second finger, okay? But there's a few different ways we can play it as well. We could use our first and second finger on the second frets of the D and B string, all right? And, or we could use our second and third fingers on the second fret of the D and uh, B string, okay? All right, so that is the A7 chord, all right? Two more, or actually a, a few more chords to go. Uh, before we get into um, the bar chords, all right? Here we have the D7, okay? And we have the second finger on the second fret of the G string, the first finger is on the first fret of the B string, and the third finger is on the second fret of the high E string. Okay, so it looks a little something like this, okay? can hear, but these, um, these chords kind of sound a little bit more twangy. Uh, I don't know if y'all know what twangy means, but it has kind of a little bit of a uh, edgier sound, if you will, uh, than the regular major and minor chords that we've learned so far. Okay? So... Alright, don't worry if you don't know what twangy means, that's okay. It's a word I kind of made up anyway. Um, kind of made up. Uh, twang is a word, I reckon. Um, so, the next chord, this is uh, an interesting one here. Because we need to do something with our first finger that we may have never ever done before. Uh, but this is a great chord to start getting that first finger barring action uh, going. All right, and what I mean by getting that barring action going is the following. You see that the first finger has to bar the first fret of the B and I E string. So that means, right, it's similar to what we did for smoke on the water. If you remember way back when in lesson uh, two, right, first finger is on the first fret of the uh, high E and B string, right? Second finger is on the second fret of the G string, and then we have the open D. And we play those four strings. Right? And this technique where the first finger bars, right, which means that it's pressing on the same fret but on multiple strings, Right? This is a technique that we have to start becoming familiar with. And it's a difficult technique, um, and especially as you'll see uh, as, as the lesson progresses, and it is one of the most difficult techniques for any uh, beginner and even intermediate uh, players. But hopefully, um, the way in which I'll be approaching it is going to be the best for you. All right? And I do encourage everybody, I suggest for everybody to really master this D minor 7th because having this first finger by the first fret of the B and the high E string is something that I like to call a mini bar, all right? And it's not the things that you get in the hotels, all right? It's, uh, well, it depends, I guess, if you have your guitar in your hotel room and a mini bar, well, you'd have too many bars then if you were doing this technique. Anyway, I digress. Uh, apologies. All right. So here uh, we have this uh, bar, and so again, it's really, really, really important technique. So I really do um, suggest that you do the fingerings uh, that are on the screen. All right. Most, most of all, because we're going to need to use that third finger later. All right, so I'm going to ask, can I use my third finger on the second fret of the G string? And again, it's really best if you try to do uh, the fingerings that are 
on here. Now, um, here we have a C7 chord. And the reason I show this chord right now is because if we learn this chord, okay, if we learn this chord, we can actually play it anywhere around the neck, just like bar chords and how bar chords work. And this is something that we get into a lot more in the Ultimate Guitar program, but I first want to just introduce this chord, let you, let you get your feet wet with it, and then, you know, this is something that you can, that'll enable you to play rhythm all up and down the neck. All right, wonderful, Paul, wonderful. So, with the C7 chord, right, we have the third finger on the third fret of the A string, second fingers on the second fret of the D string, and the first fingers on the first fret of the B string. This is just like the C major chord, except then we put the fourth finger on the third fret of the G string. Okay, so again, I have my C major chord here. I have my C major chord, and then I put my fourth finger on the third fret of the D string. Okay. This chord is used a lot uh, in many different styles of music, but if you like the Beatles, they use this uh, chord quite a lot. If you like Bob Dylan, they use this chord quite a lot. He, they, he uses this chord co uh, quite a lot. And uh, Elvis, um, just so, so many different people uh, using uh, this chord. Okay, so that is the C7 chord. My guitar almost fell there. All right, and last but not least, the G7 chord. All right, and this is a really big one. Again, uh, if you've been doing your stretching exercises, hopefully this chord is going to be a little bit uh, more uh, attainable, if you will. All right, so we have the third finger on the third fret of the low E string, second finger on the second fret of the A string, and the first finger on the first fret of the high E string. So this is a really, really big one. Again, this is why I gave everybody those stretching exercises, right? Because we really have to be able to stretch between our first and second fingers, right? From the high E to the A string. Alright, so these are just some chords again. If you're having a little bit of trouble with some of these, that's okay. Uh, I, uh, that's to be expected. You know, uh, Rome wasn't built in a day, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, uh, I didn't uh, learn how to play the guitar in uh, one day, in one week, or even four weeks. Uh, it took, uh, you know, it took, took a little bit of time, uh, and it was a lot of fun time. Uh, but so, so there you go. These are the seven chords that you would most likely see in any sort of uh, sheet music that you might be finding on the internet. Okay, so do I have any questions from anybody out there before I continue on? Do I have any questions? All right. Well, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it seems like I do get a question often about the fingerings uh, uh, from these chords. And again, I, I strongly encourage that you try to do the fingerings exactly as I lay them out to be. And uh, this is something that's also important for the final assignment as well. Um, when uh, you're doing the final assignment, the final exam, uh, the correct answer is going to be the fingerings that, um, you know, I would have taught you during the lessons. So, let us level up, all right, and let us learn a little bit about bar chords. Now, before I get into bar chords, I want to talk a little bit about this device. Right now, there's many different kinds of this device. It's called a capo, or here in Ireland, they say a capo. Um, and I don't know why they say it like that, and they don't know why they say it the way I do. <laughs> but uh, I'll call it a capo just because that's what I'm used to doing, even though I'm in Dublin, Ireland. All right, so... What a capo does is you take it and you put it on 
one of the frets. And what it does, it shortens the neck. Now, I am going to do my best. I'm going to write a note for myself right now to make sure I bring a capo in uh, for a Wednesday's lesson because we actually need it for that lesson. Um, but uh, what this device does, it allows you to shorten the neck so you can play all the open chords, but in this case, two frets down. And you wouldn't actually be playing an E minor chord, which is what you see in the picture, okay? Um, you would be playing an F sharp minor, because the F sharp is on that second fret of the low E string. So maybe a little bit too much uh, theory there for some of you out there, and I don't expect everybody to understand completely what the different names of the chords are when you put a capo on. But one thing that people who use a capo use it for is to get around playing bar chords. And this is a mistake. And the reason I say it's a mistake is because there, even if you use a capo, there will be times when you have to use bar chords. I use a capo actually very, very frequently when I play in uh, the bluegrass style. All right, bluegrass is a form of uh, uh, very fast picking um, music from the United States. Okay, um, and even though I use a capo a day to play this music, I still have to use bar chords all the time. Okay, now. Uh, so, again, a, a capo isn't necessarily there uh, for you to never have to play bar chords. It just kind of might make li things a little bit more convenient for you so you play less bar chords. Okay, so that's what I want to say about capos. Okay, before we get into uh, bar chords, because I do get a lot of questions about capos. Now, um... Before I continue, before we actually get into bar chords, as I mentioned about a couple minutes ago, bar chords are the single most difficult um, technique and skill for beginners and even intermediate players uh, to master. Okay, now I'm going to show them to you and you can practice them, but there are ways how we can substitute four bar chords without having to play uh, with a capo, okay? And how do we do that? We use what is called power chords, or we can use partial bar chords, okay? So the first thing that I'd like to show everybody is the power chord. And this here is relatively easy, okay? It's relatively straightforward, okay? The reason is, is because it's a chord that's made of two notes, and the shape of this chord never changes, okay? So, what I have here uh, in the picture is the D power chord, right? Where I have the first finger on the fifth fret of the A string, and the third finger on the seventh fret of the the D string. And the one thing about this kind of chord, alright, is, alright, I have to, when I strum, I'm only strumming those two strings. As you can see, first finger is on the fifth fret of the A, third finger is on the third, uh, seventh fret of the D string, okay, and when I strum, I'm only strumming these two strings. Or if I use my thumb, chord that I want to show you is the A power chord. Right? The A power chord, you can see just by the picture that it looks exactly the, like the same shape, except now I have my first finger on the fifth fret of the low E string, third finger on the seventh fret of the A string. Okay, so here I am. Okay, and... Okay, so from the D power chord to the A power chord. Alright, now for some, sometimes, you know, when people are first learning this, they use their first and fourth finger, and 
that is uh, maybe 25% okay. I, I'd much rather you uh, use your third finger, okay? Uh, much rather you use your third finger. But the great thing about this power cord is, these power cords, is that you can move them up and down the neck, okay, on their respective strings, and it changes the chord, right? So if I'm on the fifth fret of the low E string, I'll play the A power chord. But if I am on the seventh fret of the low E string, that would be a B power chord. Or if I'm on the third fret of the low E string, keeping that same shape, so that means my third finger would be on the fifth fret of the A string, I'd be playing the G power chord. All right, now a question that I get a lot is, well, what, what about up here? If I played that same shape up here on the higher strings, would that be a power chord? And the answer is no. The reason why the answer is no is because even though that sounds nice and, you know, nice and pretty, it doesn't sound as full as, like, and this is where the power comes from. Like, it's very, very, very strong. Okay? So, power chords are only when you play them from the low E and A string, or from the A string to D string. Okay? So, this is something that can be substituted for the full bar chords, which we haven't gotten to yet, but we will shortly. Okay? So... The next substitution that we can use for the uh, bar chord, okay, for a full bar chord, is what's called a partial bar chord. Now, this is specifically called an F major partial bar chord. And if anybody has any questions, feel free. Uh, otherwise, I assume that uh, you understand everything so far. Okay. Um, so here I'd like everybody to try uh, to do this. We're going to have to actually do that same mini bar that we did earlier in today's lesson when we tried to help, uh, try to hold the D minor 7 chord. Okay, so it's, it's actually a very similar chord uh, in that two of the three things that we need to do are the same. Right, so I have my third finger on the third fret of the D string, second finger on the second fret of the G string, and my first finger right, is barring that first fret of the B and the high E string. Okay? And I'm only playing these four notes, these four strings. Right? So again, I have this mini bar going on right here. Right? So again, even this chord might be a little bit challenging for uh, some of you if this is the first time that you've ever done it, but again, this is uh, such a great substitution for having to play the full bar chord. The reason why this is called the F major partial bar chord is because I have my third finger on the third fret of the D string. Now the third fret of the D string is the F note, okay? So, I can, similarly to the uh, power chords, I can keep this same shape, but if I move down a fret, alright, I change the name of the note, uh, the name of the chord, excuse me, and the name of the notes, okay? So, if I continue on, I would be changing chords. So, even just by learning this one shape will help us to learn every single major chord that is in the book. Very powerful thing right there. Okay, so, to um, reinforce what I just said, all right, again, we're starting on the third fret of the D string. That is the third, uh, that is the F note. Now, if I started on the fourth fret, and I uh, apologize for the blurry view right there, if I'm starting on the fourth fret of the uh, D string, I would be playing an F sharp major 
partial bar chord. Okay. And if I went down the neck, if I continued down the neck, the chord would change, right? If I started on the fifth fret, okay, I would be playing a G major partial bar chord. Okay, so these partials are really, really great in, in that they allow us to play all sorts of different chords that we cannot play in the open position. And also important to know is the minor partial bar chord. And we're starting on the third fret of the D string with our third finger, okay? And so this is why this is the F minor, okay? As we just saw, all right? And here we're going to have to... Um, extend our mini bar, right? Because the first finger now has to bar the first uh, the first frets of the G, B, and the high E string. Third finger is on the third finger is on the D string. Okay, and similar, similarly um, to the F major, right? Again, if we put our uh, if we start our um, F minor partial bar chord or the partial minor bar chord on the 4th fret, it would be an F sharp minor, and so on, the, the more we go down the neck, okay? So, now I'd like to introduce the full bar chords, okay? And this is something that, again, I, I'm just going to introduce it just so you know why the partial is a partial and why the full is the full and why exactly we're not going to spend so much time on the full bar chords because they are very, very challenging. All right? And again, uh, as you can see what's written on the screen, we have to bar all of the strings on the first fret for the F major. Right? Third and fourth finger is on the um, third frets of the A and D string respectively, and the second fingers on the second fret of the G string, right? And so that would be the full F major bar chord, and then we have the F minor bar chord, all right? And here, the first finger again bars every string, third and fourth fingers on the third frets of the A and D strings, okay? And this is the full F minor bar chord. Now, the reason I'm showing it to you is, is because if you really want to challenge yourself, if you really want to, uh, you know, push yourself to work on these, I, I say the earlier you start doing so, the better. However, it does take a while. I'm not going to lie to you. It does take some practice, okay? Um, and that is why I also showed you the power chords, and that's why I also showed you the substitutions, those kind of partial bar chords, because there will be, I guarantee it, there will be a time when you have to play those, if you want to play the songs that you love, all right, now, I, when we get to the Ultimate Guitar Program, I, um, you know, give more tips and tricks on how to master the full uh, bar chords, um, and also learn a couple other bar chords, but then also learn some tricks on how to play more full voicings uh, without actually having to play bar chords, but it's still, again, just building up the strength that you can eventually play the bar chords. But again, for right now, it's important that you at least know the substitutions because you'll, that will enable you to play lots and lots of different songs. Okay? Any questions so far? Ladies and gentlemen, any questions so far? Um, all right, thank you, Kevin. Uh, Rosie, wonderful. Thank you. Okay, very good, very good. All right, well, I will... <laughs> Pranav says my fingers hurt. Yeah, that is... Uh, that is to be expected. That is to be expected. Um... Uh, Amita says the F minor is hard to make. Yeah, uh, it is. Can, can be indeed. Uh, who else do I see out there? Louise says um, that her hand is about to fall off. <laughs> so, very good. Oh, 
control for love. Trust me. All right. So let us uh, take a look at uh, a couple songs for today. Okay. And what we're gonna do is look at the songs Ho Hey and Some Nights, which are relatively uh, recent songs. I should say less than seven songs. Okay. Um, then we're gonna look at U2 song with or without you and Johnny Cash's Folsom Prison Blues. Okay. So what you see here on the screen is an immediate need and necessity to try that F uh, partial F major bar chord. All right, so I'm going to do a demonstration like I always do, and then let's try playing it together. Again, this is practice time. Uh, enough of me yapping away. You know, this is practice time where we can actually apply what it is. Um, you know, and you can see these chords being used in action right away. All right, so let me just make myself a touch bit smaller. Um, uh, all right, so here we are. Uh, let me count it off. This starts on beat four, so I need to play that F major, all right, partial on beat four, and then I play a C major. All right, so here we go. A one.
just make myself a touch bit smaller here. All right. So, good job, everybody. Good job, good job, good job. All right, let's move on. All right, let's do it again. A one, two, three, four. A one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three.
song, Oh Hey. Let's move on to the next song. The next song is Some Nights. And it's actually a very, very similar song because we have to use the same, almost the same exact chords. All right, so we start on the C major chord, and then we have that F to C movement, all right, that we saw in the whole hey. And the reason I chose to do this song right afterwards is because just to um, reinforce the fact that this type of chord shows up all the time, and also this movement, the F to the C, happens very, very, very frequently. Um, you know, about half of the time that there's a C chord in a song, you're going to have an F chord with it. Okay, so again, very important that we start becoming more comfortable with uh, this F major. So, let's just do it a couple more times in a different song, and uh, then we'll move on to something completely different. So, here we are. A one, two, three, four... Right? I don't expect you all to keep up with that. All right? And then uh, there's the second half again, as there was earlier. And it's very similar, again, to the second half of uh, Ho Hey, um, in that we're still using F and C chords, and then there's an A minor and a G. So again, hopefully this is... You know, there's patterns, muscle memory that start to build up, and also maybe even some understanding. Be like, all right, well, this is the second song that we see that are using the same exact chords, albeit in a slightly different order. But again, these chords. Another reason why I'm uh, showing you this other song uh, is to show how many songs use the same exact chords. All right, so here we are. Here is the second half of Sun Nights. Oh, one. Okay, so let's try to do it a couple times, ladies and gentlemen, then we will move on, okay? So, a one, two... C chord and C two. Ready for that F. F two C four. F two C four. G two. Okay. Then the second half. A one two. Ready and F two C. to the F, to the C, and a G, two, three, and four, F, C, F, C, and then A minor, three, four, then, but again, these chords, another reason why I'm uh, showing you this other song uh, is to show how Many songs use the same exact chords. All right, so here we are. Here is the second half of Sun Nights. A one, two, three, four.
to it. Yeah. Okay. One thing that I hope that you've been able to notice is while I am, uh, you know, there's space in between having to go from the to C. Seventh fret, and then back down to the third fret. 
fretting. Right, so when I'm playing the D power chord, I am only strumming the A and D strings. When I'm playing the A, B minor, and the G power chords, I am uh, just strumming the low E and the A strings. All right. So let's do this one more time. Um, John asks, "Can I borrow the fifth fret and then the seventh fret?" Uh, I don't know exactly how you mean, John. Um, um, if you want to play bar chords, then yeah, you can play bar chords with this song, yeah, sure. But this power chord way is kind of actually what they do uh, during this song, so it's uh, entirely up to you. Uh, one more time. One, two, ready, and... Some more 
Christ.